everyone and welcome back to my channel and if you're new then hello! Today we're going to be doing a really simple video. We're actually going to be doing this video outside. We're going to be going outside to go and try to find some supplies and decorations that you guys can use for your reptile enclosures. I'm also going to be showing you guys how to disinfect and sanitize those items as well so that they are safe for your animals. Joining me for the intro today is Eve. She's actually pretty okay for handling. I don't know why the others don't like me and she's taken a liking to me, but it's uh, been rather pleasant. She's pretty sweet. I guess she likes it up there. It should be noted that there can always be a potential risk when bringing things from outside and putting them into your reptile enclosures. But if you really want to be safe and want to save yourself all this work, then it's best just to buy supplies that are already geared towards reptiles at your local pet store. If they don't have what you're looking for, then hop onto whatever modern technological device you have and check out some online stores that will ship to your region. It's really nice outside and we've been having some beautiful weather in Canada, so I thought it'd be a good idea to go outside and enjoy it and bring you guys along with me as well. Eve won't be coming with us because uh, it's too cold. Even though it's kind of nice out, it's not nice out for reptiles. Are you just gonna like hang out there the whole time? Why do your friends hate me? Well, I think I'm gonna go put her back now and we're gonna go outside for our little nature walk and go and look for some nice things to go and put into our reptile enclosures. If you like this video, then be sure to let me know by giving it a thumbs up, leaving me a comment down below, and hit that subscribe button if you wanna see more updates and videos like this in the future. And with all that said and done, let's go outside. We are now outside. There is literally only like probably 30 or 45 minutes worth of daylight hours left, so I gotta be quick. But I'm just down here to grab some soil and some leaves. The soil that I'm collecting, I'm actually gonna be using for some of my plants. They're not gonna be for my reptile enclosures entirely, but those plants will in the future go into my reptile enclosures, so yeah. I didn't know where the shovel was, so I'm using a cooking spoon. My mother's gonna kill me. Looks like there could be lots of leaves in here. These leaves right here, I really love to use for the tanks. So I see some of these around, so I will collect them. Look, I found a bunch of beautiful oak leaves. Because of the time of year, it's kind of hard to find moss, but I think I found a pretty good patch right here. So I'm just kind of cleaning it off off of here and just picking any things out of it that I don't want. And I'm just going to gently pick it up. Lots of rocks and stuff down here. So let's go take a look. Oh my God. Okay. okay, it's starting to get dark, so I'm gonna actually head home. <sighs> so we're at the beach in November because it's Canada. Yeah. I like using driftwood from the beach because it's already smoothed down naturally by the sand. This might be uh, an option. Of course, I enjoyed my time while I was at the beach and had a little bit of fun as well, and then decided to enjoy the rest of the lovely evening by watching the beautiful sunset. Guys, it's a bunny. <gasps> Look. Hi, bunny. But while I was leaving the beach, I felt a little disappointed. Despite the lovely weather and being surrounded by all this beautiful nature and wildlife, I am reminded of the problems our planet is facing. No matter where I looked, trash was everywhere and littering the very homes of the wildlife that live in it. There's some more trash way over here. Right? Is there any birds? I can hear them, but I can't see them. The beaver. See that there's tons of wildlife around here. 
I left feeling a little hopeless. So here's our supplies that we collected from outside. First we have our aspen and oak leaves, and then some of our soil that we collected, some of that moss as well. An interesting flat rock here that I found. And then those wood pieces that we found at the beach. So there's a few different ways that you can disinfect and sterilize these for your enclosures, but I'm gonna show you the ways that I tend to use and that I find the easiest and fastest. Personally, there is three different ways that I like to use to sterilize and disinfect decor. And those methods that I like to use are usually cooking, boiling, and soaking in bleach solution. All right, so with all that said and done, let's start the cleaning process. I'm gonna get down from here because I've been filming this on top of my bathtub. First thing I'm gonna do with the soil is I'm gonna pick out any little like pieces and things that I just feel shouldn't be in the soil. There could be bugs and other stuff in here, so make sure to go through it pretty thoroughly. I'm also gonna take some of these bigger clumps here and just break them up. I've already gone ahead and put this on a oven safe baking pan and also lined it with some tin foil. Next, we're just gonna rinse off this piece of wood and rock here. And I'm just going to use hot water and a dish sponge to remove any extra debris. And we're going to let that bake for about an hour and a half to two hours. You're going to want to make sure everything that's on there is dead. Dead and gone. I think an hour and a half is going to be sufficient for tonight all of my wood pieces I've found myself. You can find some really nice pieces if you're patient. This one was a pretty sweet find for my fire skink because it was kind of like round so it made like a pretty good low hide especially since they're uh burrowers and there's Jasper there. I'm completely redoing their enclosure um just complete change of plans. Also he's not looking uh too fiery he's about to shut soon. Okay, this video isn't about you. By far, this is the most favorite wood piece that I found. I found this piece and I was like, oh my god, this is gonna be epic. So yeah, there's another example of a nice wood piece that I found. And it's done. For bigger pieces of wood, I like to do a bleach soak in the bathtub as well for rocks because rocks can't be uh, heated up in the oven because they can explode and I don't want anything exploding and neither do you. So that is why we are going to do a simple bleach solution. If you don't have a bathtub, you could always use a giant barrel or bin of some sort or maybe you have a friend that might want to lend you their bathtub for this kind of thing. That's a really good friend. Hang on to those kinds of people. Oh my God, I didn't notice this before, but there's a really cool fossil on this rock. Actually, it looks like there's a few. Pretty nice find to put these on myself. Now I'm just using some regular bleach here. Ideally, you're aiming for about a 10% bleach solution. I'll put the ratio to follow somewhere on the screen. Now you're going to want to let this soak for about 24 hours. After 24 hours, take the items out and let them soak again for another few hours in regular water, and then you can take them out to dry. If the items still continue to smell like bleach, then continue to soak them. Now we are moving on to the leaf litter. Leaf litter is great for vivariums and for your microfauna and bioactive setups but they can also just make a setup look more natural and decorative as well. Next up, we're going to boil the leaf litter that we collected and let's have them in here. And we're just gonna boil it for about uh, 20 minutes. I'm sure that he's considered a pest, but I'm not going to boil him. I'm actually gonna go put him outside. It's a dark out now, but he can uh, go be free in my garden. Back to boiling the leaves. And that's why I like to go through them one at a time. 
This will boil down uh, in just a few minutes. You should also check to make sure that the leaves that you're using are safe for reptiles. It's starting to smell like a forest in here. Also, it's getting a little hot. But yeah, this is how you make your own leaf litter, whether it's for your isopods um, and your springtails, or if it's just for the aesthetic purpose and you just like the way it makes a tank look. I think these are ready to be put out to dry now. So for the moss, we're actually going to soak it in some water here. I have a separate container filled with tap water. I use tap water for the first rinse and then after I have a separate water container here filled with reverse osmosis water that I'll be doing for the final rinsing process. And I'm just going to kind of like wash it a bit, remove all that dirt. Okay, so I'm going to let this soak for actually about 20 minutes and I'm actually going to go eat dinner and then I'm going to come back and then hopefully it'll be a little bit cleaner for the next rinse. So that's been soaking for about 20 minutes and now I'm going to go transfer it into another thing of water. So you're going to keep doing this rinsing and repeat process until the water becomes as clear as possible. So finally, the water's starting to look pretty clear. And now we're gonna do the last soak. So I'm just gonna grab our reverse osmosis water. And then I'm gonna take our pieces and let them soak in here one last time. I wouldn't recommend putting this into an enclosure with an animal right away. What I personally would recommend is letting it propagate and kind of quarantining it for at least a minimum of two weeks. So I have an empty enclosure here that I'm gonna put the moss in to try and grow it. I've tried growing moss before and I did not succeed, but I also did not have sun blasters before. So let's see if uh, this time we'll have a success. And there you have it everybody, that is how I clean and disinfect items and decor for all of my reptile enclosures. Thank you again so much for watching and I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I want to help people be inspired by the natural world in the same way it has always inspired and captivated myself and many others. When people are inspired, they are connected to a powerful source and energy. When people respect animals and respect nature, then we can start making more conscious decisions on how we can do our part. But you don't have to like something to respect it. I hope that my channel will help to inspire, engage, and educate so that we can have a better future for our animals, our planet, and of course, ourselves. Thank you all for watching my Fauniverse and I will see you all next time. Sorry, my bangs are like, I need to trim them. There we go. So I don't feel like waiting for the leaves to dry overnight. So I'm actually gonna go get a blow dryer and just quickly dry them. Huzzah.